the program is called the Archaeology Field Assistant Program, and it's designed to deliver applied skills for people that want to work in our province's cultural resource management industry. The aim of the program is to uh, help students learn and then practice the skill set that they would need to be competent field assistants. So um, I've worked with the archaeology branch to identify all of those skills and then I've worked with um, our local indigenous communities here in the Greater Victoria area um, to figure out how we can um, build partnerships between the program and local communities to provide applied projects so students can practice the skills while doing archaeology projects that are relevant and prioritized by communities. So I will uh, partner with a, a community and they will ask to have a particular area, generally on reserve but always within their traditional territory, that will be um, surveyed and mapped um, to help them protect it. Um, and uh, my students have the opportunity to um, meet with elders, learn about cultural protocols, learn about what Indigenous archaeology is all about. I would say that increasingly I think about doing good archaeology, it's more than just learning how to use a measuring, measuring tape. It's learning from elders about um, how to follow protocols and doing, doing work that is, is meaningful and respectful. I would say my definition of education has changed um, over the 15 years that I've been a teacher. Uh, when I arrived, I've, I was still thinking about education in a very passive way, because that's the way that I was taught. You sit in a chair, you listen, you don't necessarily participate, and you're the sponge. And increasingly, I am more interested in education being something that is participatory. Um, we are all teachers and we're all learners and um, sharing, the, sharing the floor, so having multiple voices. Um, I don't, as a teacher, I don't want to always be in that power position where I'm saying I am the authority and you're going to sit and listen. Um, and it's, it's really refreshing to be able to share those responsibilities. And when I work in community, um, of course, I don't have that knowledge base, and it's wonderful to have um, the relationships that I've built over 15 years um, living here in Lekwungen and, and Wasonic territories um, to be able to have uh, lots of different expertise that is brought into my classrooms, whether they're the four walls of a college uh, classroom or um, you know, on a, a small island where we're doing archaeology work in uh, a particular territory. Uh, and we are all learning at that point. So to work with knowledge keepers who are interested in learning what I have to, to say, and I am really interested in what they have to share as well. And so I think of education as something really dynamic. It's ongoing. Um, I'm a lifelong learner, and that's a really, it's a really exciting, dynamic way of of approaching it, in my opinion. Through the 1990s, this growing awareness that, oh, we should probably be doing more collaboration and consultation. And I was getting really tired of seeing the um, Indigenous cultural assistants basically being told, you just sit over there. You don't have the skills to really be able to do much. so just be happy that you're here. And I found that really offensive. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was a, a motivating factor in developing the ARC field assistant program for Camosun. Yeah. How do we build that capacity so that our indigenous community members are full-fledged members of a team? That they're there because they have all sorts of stuff to add in, in addition to their cultural awareness and their interest. Um, they, they can be um, archeological field technicians as well. We haven't had as many Indigenous learners as I would like. So the program originally designed uh, in terms of entrance requirements, for example, yeah. to include um, as many interested community members as possible. I was really thrilled that a quarter of my students last year, 2017, um, were Indigenous students, and I am hoping that we are going to continue to expand that capacity building for community. 
Um, they generally are very excited about contributing to their own communities and learning about their own heritage. I've had um, three students from the Seashelt Nation that are now all working uh, for the Seashelt Nation in some capacity in um, heritage, which I think is um, just, it's amazing. And so part of what I would like to see the Archaeology Field Assistant Program doing is building that capacity. Um, so saying, how can I support you and your community so that you can be representing your own heritage and you can um, you can be one of the voices that is is building this understanding of um, how you have this deep heritage to this landscape that can be used in traditional use studies and um, treaty negotiations, um, you know, there's going to be growing uh, need for the complementarity of um, archaeological work um, thanks to the Silquitine decision. And um, I think that there's a lot of interest from uh, a variety of communities to have um, a, a wide variety of community members trained so that they aren't obligatory members of archaeology teams. When you include more elders, you include more land-based learning, you need budgets to be able to do that. You need to recognize that you can't have the same expectations around um, the number of students in a class, um, which from a financial perspective is important for um, institutions, but isn't necessarily going to work if you're trying to move students onto the land and learn in a different way. And so that flexibility is something that I think we're still, we're still figuring out. There's a huge amount of support here at Camosun for that. And, and just recognizing that we still have a lot to learn from one another in terms of how we walk this path in a good way. And um, just really being appreciative of the guidance that we get, particularly from um, our Indigenous partners and our elders to how do we do, how do, we do it well.